so the laundering effect is one of the, the things that we investigated. And um, well, its roots are obvious, you know, so you think about money laundering is the idea of taking bad money or dirty money and cleaning it, making it good, or in some cases making it legal. Um, we, we chose that term because uh, we said that, that the money that people receive, like let's say from an inheritance or from uh, a bonus that they felt like they didn't deserve, or even a lottery that they won, but they could have won more money, so they have some negative feelings about it, uh, that they choose uh, to use that money for virtuous purchases or for utilitarian purchases. They want to do some good with it. And when you use that money, uh, let's say, to give to a charity or to um, purchase, uh, excuse me, to spend money on educational expenses, it, it can strip away that negative tag, that negative emotional tag there, um, and thus sort of launder the money of its negative affect component. And, th and then afterwards, people report feeling much better about the money and about its use. So there has been a little bit of academic work that was related to this. Um, so an anthropologist uh, named Parker Shipton had, has done uh, research on an African tribe. And this tribe has uh, a term for money like this. They call it bitter money. And this is money that is received from like the sale of tobacco or from alcohol. And uh, what's interesting about this tribe is that they actually have rituals um, in which they sort of purify the money, in which they, they um, are able to sort of cleanse the money of its sort of badness before they can use it for regular purposes. Another example of uh, emotional accounting, uh, I think, happened um, with a, a group of East um, Chapel Hill high school teachers. So East Chapel Hill is a fairly affluent um, community. And uh, they were being given performance-based bonuses. So um, depending on how their students did on, uh, on the standardized tests, these, uh, these teachers were given a bonus. Well, they're smart. They know, they know that their students were going to do well regardless of their actual performance. These were kids coming from a, from a, a pretty affluent neighborhood. And uh, they chose to reject this bonus. They felt it was unfair, that it wasn't right. And, uh, and they donated that money to a, a rural school in, in North Carolina. I think another example of, of emotional accounting, that they just felt, didn't feel good about receiving this money, and they looked for a good way to use it. One of the things that, that we've talked about doing is seeing how generalizable these findings are. Um, I think it's the case that this effect is not limited to money um, and uh, is actually much more per pervasive. Um, so think about your possessions. Think about the things that you own. There are likely to be circumstances where you receive something that you're happy about receiving it. You're happy to receive it, but you may also have some negative feelings about it. So consider a car that you get, um, you know, that was your aunt's car. She passed away. She, she um, passed it along to you, um, and that you might feel, uh, you might, you know, feel some wistfulness. You might feel a little bit guilty about how you acquired the car. Um, you can imagine that those negative feelings could in, inform uh, the decisions that you make, can influence the decisions that you make. So, do you take better care of the car? Do you um, are you more cautious about who you lend it to? When the car starts to break down. Are you more likely to spend money on it to get it back up and running rather than uh, if it was a car that you had just regular, you know, run-of-the-mill feelings about that you might feel comfortable trading in? Um, and so I think that those feelings about the possessions that we have can have a big effect on the types of choices we make with regard to how we dispose of them, um, how we use them, who we let use them, uh, and so on. The idea of consumer psychology, I, I think, is intriguing. I mean, I started as a psychologist, as a straight psychologist, as someone who studies judgment and decision making. And I naturally gravitated to consumer choice uh, because it's such a big part of our lives. I mean, we spend, um, you know, we, we spend money doing it, we spend time doing it, and the outcomes of those choices have a big effect on our happiness. Um, or in some cases, unhappiness. And so it, it's nice to be able to take topics um, and find 
real world applications um, and to hopefully give people a little bit better insight into the types of choices that they make and, uh, and perhaps help them make slightly better choices. Thank you.